doing a video about this mirror. So I went through the car wash and I think some water got in somewhere. Anyway, it quit working after I um, went through the car wash and it burned out the fuse. So I'm going to dig in and see what's going on. Um, a couple of y'all asked about these caps. Uh, so I went with painted ones and I used paint from paintscratch.com uh, and I've been really happy with it. I had a problem with these popping off and so they sent me a second set. Uh, it didn't solve the problem. What I ended up doing is gluing these in with PVC glue and unfortunately they won't come off now. So I don't know how that's going to go. But anyway, um, let's get started. I'm going to show you where the fuse is at because it's, it's really a piece of work to get to. And then I'm going to install a new fuse and see if this comes back to life and it's dried out. All right, so first things first, the fuse panel you're looking for is sometimes called a central junction box. That's a really fancy name to say fuse box. And it is down here. So this, you're going to need to pull your floor mat out of the way. It's in the passenger front seat against the outer kick wall. And this basically sits in here like this and you pull this out just like that. And then this little cover sits on top of it. So let me get repositioned. I'll show you what we're working on. All right, so the fuse that you're looking for is this one that's not in right now. And these fuses are really, really tiny. These are called low profile mini fuses. So you got ATC blade, mini blade, and then this low profile, which is about half the size. And to put it in perspective how small this is, it's about the size of my pinky finger fingernail. They are a little bit hard to find, and this is the only thing, there are only two things that use them on a, on a 2014 F-150. So one of them is the power mirror control relay, and the other, uh, I gotta make more space in here. Ah, uh, yeah, it's up here. The other is this. So they're just really hard to get. Um, I got them for 99 cents a piece at Advance Auto. They sell them from behind the counter and they don't even know they carry them. So you gotta ask for them and they don't have them at all stores. So anyway, now that that's in, let's see if the mirrors work. So the problem I had before was that the mirrors weren't working. Yep, we're just getting a clicking noise. We'll start it. Still getting a clicking noise. That's bad juju. So we're gonna have to take the door panel off and see what's going on. All right, so there's a screw here and one here and one there that hold this in place. And I think, if I remember right, there was one back there, but I honestly don't remember. So you do need a spudger. A spudger is just a little plastic tool for getting under these things. And I'm gonna use this one. So I pried it out and then I'm gonna put the little hook piece under here. Yeah, it's tearing up my spudger. That's irritating, but not a big surprise. There it goes. So you just gotta pop that out of there. Saints inch bit will work, um, although I think it's metric, but it's so close that this does work. Um, just when tightening it, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. And then there's two more screws down here. A little hard to see. All right, these do work with this. There's one. And there's the other. there was another one oh that's right this little black pla plate has to come out all right so got a little screwdriver and I'm just gonna pry it in there that's that's how I did it last time I think and this is the 5 16 bit so it's the larger of the two There we 
go. All right, and then this just pops up and off. And I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'm just gonna let it hang. Um, it actually is hanging on a tab. It's not hanging on the wires. And then I can carefully get back here and see what is going on. So first things first, I wanna un unclip this and just see if it works now. Good news, it is isolated to this mirror. So now what we wanna do is see if we can find out what happened. So we'll reconnect this and see if it still gives us grief. That's a good sign. It's going in one direction, but not the other. So I'm gonna get some WD-40 and spray in here to make sure there's not water in here. So before any of y'all comment, oh, WD-40, blah, blah, blah. Drives out moisture, water dispersant 40. That's actually what the product is. So we're gonna use it. Contact cleaner would be better, but this will work. Okay, so now we're gonna see if it comes back to life or if it's still a mechanical failure. still seems to be a mechanical failure. It just came back to life. All right, with a big sigh of relief, it looks like that solved the problem. So let me see if I can make it a permanent fix. So I'm gonna put some dielectric grease in there and then I'm gonna put some electrical tape and then I'm gonna use some friction tape because I think the problem is water is able to get in here sometimes and I'm gonna try and waterproof it a little bit better. So first things first, let's undo this and add some dielectric grease into this fitting. So it doesn't take a whole lot of that. It's just there to keep water out. Okay, so it's squeezing out the sides. That is what I want because now I know that water can't get in. All right, now I'm gonna try and get in here with some blue electrical tape. No reason for blue other than it's available. And I'm gonna do this in little pieces mainly because it's just a difficult spot to work in. Okay. 
heat shrink tape would be another or heat shrink tubing would be another really good solution but i really don't want to heat up this area and the wiring for the truck so i'm i'm trying to avoid that And now I'm gonna tuck this up in here a little bit differently than I had. I had it horizontal, I'm gonna keep it vertical now because I think this will keep the water out. Um, there's not room for the friction tape, so it's not gonna go in there. Um, but I think, I think if this will stay in this position, that it will be less likely to get wet. And I've got it up, I've got it jammed up there pretty good. So now I'm going to check and make sure it still works. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I do want to give them credit. It is a lifetime warranty. I emailed them asking for help troubleshooting it and they sent me a whole new mirror assembly. Uh, I'm gonna send it back unopened. I really do appreciate them standing behind their product. These were dearly expensive. I think I paid $750 for the mirrors and another $100 worth of um, touch up paint from paintscratch.com. Uh, you know, that's expensive, but I, I've always wanted these mirrors. I wanted them to match because that's a Lariat feature. So I'm really happy with the end result overall. And at this point, I'm going to button this door back up. All right, that's all there is to that. So now this goes in. These are threaded, so I like to start them by hand. These lower screws are not threaded, so they don't have to be started. They can just be put in with the tool. <clears throat> All right, now I do recommend doing that by hand if you can. Um, I have carpal tunnel issues, so doing anything by hand is hard on my hand, so I try not to do it. So I'm gonna put this irritating thing back in. There it goes, it snaps in, and then this little tri piece of trim goes down in the bottom. And then I'm gonna test it again to make sure it still works. All right, that really is a beautiful thing. I can't tell you how happy I am that my power, mirror, power fold mirrors are working again. So now I'm gonna take the driver's side uh, panel off and repeat the same treatment to make sure I don't have that problem. <sighs> That's irritating. All right, so now we're gonna repeat what we just did. We're gonna take this side off, same exact process. There's a screw up here. 
quarter inch and another one back midway here and then we've got uh, I think I need the screwdriver from the other side yep I wrote it back So I've got a second bonus camera angle up here that maybe you guys could be able to see a little more. So this just pops in there and that pops out. And then you just go down straight in here. There's actually a little indentation for this. That makes that much easier. All right. Okay, and I've got the window down this time, um, so then this just lifts up and out. And again, we'll come down and hang basically on the same thing. And then we want to look at this and see what's going on. So, see, this is in the same thing where it's, it's horizontal, and I think that's the problem. So, I'm going to grease it. And my can of grease is running low on pressure it doesn't take very much in there I don't know if you guys can see that there's just a little bit of grease in there we'll put the extra in there because it's not going to do any good out here and in case you guys are wondering what I'm using CRC dielectric grease this is for waterproofing electrical contacts that's exactly what we want to do here And then again, we're just going to go ahead and slide this in and we get some coming out the sides. That means we've been successful in filling that space with dielectric grease. Now, on the other one, it was wet, so I used WD-40 to get rid of the water and that was not, but this one's not wet, so it doesn't need that treatment. Now I'm going to come back and do the same thing where I add some electrical tape and this is a quality 3M Scotch uh, electrical tape. You could use other electrical tape, but you know, you get what you pay for. And this is mostly going to stick to itself, so it's not a huge deal um, to apply it like this. And again, I'm just I'm try trying to make this more water resistant. Um, heat shrink tape would be ideal, and if this happens again, that is what will come back in here. But I don't I, I don't want to heat up these wires. I just don't have the greatest of faith that it is. You know, I, I don't I don't want to test my luck. Um, there's a reason they're cheaper. So now I'm going to push this back up in here and. I'm going to be a little bit mean to my connectors because I want this to stay vertical like that. And that way, if water does get in here, it'll drain through. And I think that should be the end of this problem. All right, that works. Now, I did, I'm, maybe I am fibbing a little bit. I do want to look at something while I'm here. All right, these are all fully populated. So that means that one of these should be capable of powering the telescoping. So that's another video. What I want to do, I, you can see here, I don't have a place to mount a telescoping switch and this vehicle didn't have that as an option. Talked to a couple of dealers and they said, yeah, they didn't have any ideas on how to add it and make it look stock. So what I want to do is I want to add a small switch right here that is an on off on in and out just a little tiny switch here so let's go ahead and look at the back yeah that's doable there's a little spot here that could be drilled
But that's not today's project, and I'm not going to do anything until I know that I have all the components for it. So I start this at the bottom and then I work this piece in and then I work that in. And that's how I put these in and out. All right. Alright, so that's together. Now we just need to come in with this. That's not in there properly, so we're going to put this in first. They still work. That's a good thing. I think we're done here. So I'd call that a successful repair. Cost of grease and a little bit of time makes me feel good.